The next pattern in the messaging family is the translator. And the idea is to translate between different message formats. This can look like this. Again, we have our sender and the sender is sending a message in message format A. But on the receiver side, our receiver expects messages in format B. And he, he doesn't understand message format A. That's why we have our message translator here in between. And what the message translator does is simply taking the information content of message A and converting it to message B. What are the benefits? The biggest benefit is that sender and receiver don't have to speak the same language. They don't have to know the same protocols and message format. Only the message translator has to know. The translator can be reused, of course, and the translation can be parallelized. So the translation of messages can run in parallel to the sender and the receiver. Neither of them has to take care about the translation and the processing which is behind this. What are the drawbacks? Of course, the translator needs to know both protocols. If one protocol changes, the translator also has to change. There may be some performance overhead for additional translations. If we translate from JSON to XML, of course, we have to read the content of the JSON file and convert it into XML. And this adds some performance overhead. The protocols may be incompatible, so only basic communication is possible. What does this mean? Imagine we have a protocol which supports a tremendous amount of functions and possibilities and prioritization and quality of service and guarantees and contracts and so on. And on the other side, there's a simple request response protocol which doesn't support any of these features. So the message translator cannot translate those extra functional features. It has to stick to the basic communication functions. If one protocol doesn't have the expressional power than the other, the message translator has to degrade down to the common functionalities. 